Player three is entering the game. Azrock is building Intel ARC cards, and I've got the A770 to take a look at. Yes. <laughs> Wait a minute, this card looks familiar. This is a card with 8 gigabytes of GDDR6, 3 DisplayPort outputs, and 1 HDMI output. There's so many dirt cheap graphics cards on the market today compared with a few years ago. Because of the crypto crash and everything else. So why is Intel appealing now? Well, Intel's got the software engineering team. They've got the hardware chops. They know their platform. They know PCIe. Could be interesting. Could be interesting at the mid-market. Certainly Intel would find the market appealing from a profitability standpoint. Now for our test system, we're gonna be using Z790, our Tai Chi Carrera. It's a monster with uh, 13900K, of course, because that's a thing. But I, I don't actually know if I really recommend a 13900K. I mean, if you're gonna shell out for a 13900K, you shouldn't be getting an A770. You should be getting a higher end GPU. This is positioned possibly as a 6600, 6700, 3060, 3070-ish competitor that may actually be a stealth surprise win on the Linux side of things. It's some pretty good encoders and that sort of thing. I do think it's pretty genius of ASRock to basically recycle their Phantom Gaming design from other GPUs and just adapt their existing heatsink and fan solution for the Intel Arc A770. Cuts down on manufacturing costs, I'm sure. Makes it a little easier for parts availability and everything else. And it's a dual eight pin connection for power. So, okay. Let's take a look at the benchmarks. So as expected, this is a reasonable card for 1080p. If we look at our performance results and we look at Borderlands 3, it's a pretty playable experience. It's, it's pretty good overall. I mean, at 1080p, we're getting 118 FPS, so it's pretty buttery smooth. Our 1% lows are only about 61 FPS, but above 60, we do maintain that. It's pretty good. Clearly, Intel has some room to improve their drivers, but this is a pretty good experience. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, of course, is 127 FPS, an older title, but you know, that's fine. 98 FPS for Horizon Zero Dawn. Cyberpunk 2077, this is a kind of a surprise, 76 FPS. I wasn't expecting Cyberpunk to work this well. Now, I did fiddle with the graphics settings a little bit on these games. I spent some time playing and I spent some time running benchmarks, a little bit of artificial benchmarks, a little bit of actual gameplay. I was surprised how good it was because things weren't really quite this good with the 380. And Deus Ex Mankind Divided, 142 FPS again, an older title. Just wanted to see how that works, because I think that the danger is some of the older games maybe struggle a little bit. It's supposed to really just be DirectX 9, but I don't really want to get into the particulars of that. It just has to do with how DirectX works and what Intel has done for DirectX handling on the older stuff. But, uh, you know, overall, this is a really good show of 1080p. Let's move up to 1440p, though, because really, this is a 1440p card. Now, moving up to 1440, there wasn't really as much of a performance fall off as I might have expected. 83 FPS in Borderlands, that's not bad. And it really didn't negatively impact our 1% lows all that much. 47 FPS, I mean, okay, 40, 50, 60 FPS, but still, moving up to 1440p, this works pretty well. Shadow of the Tomb Raider was still 96 FPS. Horizon Zero Dawn was 91 FPS. This is a really good showing for this card. I mean, this is only just over a $300 card. Cyberpunk was able to maintain an average over 64 FPS or over 60 FPS, which is pretty nice without really dialing down the graphics settings too much. And generally that was my experience in most games, AAA titles, newer ones and middle-aged ones. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is middle-aged to elderly. It's, it's getting pretty old. 
but this is a really pretty good showing. So I decided, hey, let's try 4K. You know, eight gigabytes of memory with 4K, uh, it's maybe asking you a little much. And yeah, there are rough edges in the drivers. Horizon Zero Dawn and some other games, they would keep crashing. Fortnite especially, I mean, we got through the benchmarks, but Fortnite should theoretically, I would think, be able to run at 4K with this particular card. Maybe you might turn things down to medium, but maybe people do that anyway for competitive play. Uh, it was a little janky. And so again, the weak spot of this card is really the drivers and software support. You can tell that Intel has put a lot of work in and a ton of work in short order, but that's gonna be the rough spot with this card. So what's the verdict? Well, it's an interesting path that we've taken to get here. The ARC A770 is not a completely incompetent graphics card. It's actually pretty good. And I'm happy to report that on Linux, it has come a very long way in very short order. It is promising. It's promising for the future. I'm a little disappointed that there's not any kind of features like SRIOV or Intel GBTG on the Linux side of things, but you'd have to follow more on the level one Linux channel to get exposure to that kind of content and that sort of edge case because I think we're long past the era of having a GPU that you can share among multiple virtual machines or multiple containers easily. When NVIDIA enables that in very careful cookie cutter ways with things like CUDA, if you run CUDA on Windows, you can have containers that are CUDA based and you know they've done a really good job making sure you don't accidentally run a virtual machine that has GPU acceleration, which I think is, a, is, is criminal. And Intel can definitely fix that. They're in a position to do that because they control the CPU, the bus, and the, uh, the GPU, or they could add extensions to the bus as necessary to properly support that. So surprised that there's not even a little bit of plumbing there for that that I can find. But in terms of a gaming GPU, gamers don't really care about that. That's a me feature. That's not a real world feature. There's, there, there's, there's dozens of us, but for gaming, it actually was a little surprising. So this card will struggle with older games, older DirectX. Intel really didn't spend a lot of time with that. And that's another area where Linux really shines because you can actually run things that will translate old DirectX into modern Vulkan on modern Linux distros, and that will run better than this card runs natively on Windows. You can actually get really good performance. So best case scenario in some game benchmarks, as we saw, you could get 3070 levels of performance from NVIDIA. Pretty good, but it's a little inconsistent. So I'd say that this is a card that if you can get for a deal and nothing else is available, then it might make sense. This is also a card that if you like AV1 and encoding, it might make sense. Although AMD's new GPUs are right around the corner. They're releasing in December, around December 15th with retail availability plus or minus. And those look like they're gonna be H.265 AV1 monsters. So, Maybe something to keep in mind. Now, Intel has been at the forefront in terms of uh, acceleration for things like Premiere, your QuickSync, your iGPU. And while those features are not complete on this card, one assumes that Intel will use its 800 pound gorilla status to lean on NVIDIA to try to get them to implement those kinds of acceleration for this card. And that'll be nice. But a lot of these things that I'm describing are things that could come soon, not things that are here now. A little bit of a problem. In terms of what ASRock has done for Intel in putting this together, it's a competent card. It has good cooling. The fans actually turn off because it's sitting here not doing anything. It's only got, I think, one fan. No, yeah. Right now, all three fans are off because it's idling and it's not really doing much. Intel got the power management and everything else correct. The drivers have improved dramatically over the last month or so. Actually, Steve from Gamers Nexus let me borrow an A380. I've been experimenting with that. And 
the first video on that was all fire and brimstone and oh my gosh i can't believe it blah 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 but just a few short weeks later pretty much everything that i was going to complain about with the a380 has been fixed so intel's on top of it they're putting engineering resources into it uh this might be a card that's going to be even more fine wine than the amd fine wine just because they're going to spend so much time on their drivers and solving problems and, and getting uh, getting to the other side of issues okay bottom line for the performance that I was getting, this is kind of surprising. It really is somewhere between a 3060 Ti and a 3070. 3060 Ti, 3070, you know, these are still going for 500-ish dollars, even a little bit more for the least expensive competing cards. And this is 329. So this is a much better deal in terms of dollars, but it might take a little bit more investment of time on your part to dial in game settings or find the right combination of settings in a driver or just avoiding certain combinations that cause problems. Like in Horizon Zero Dawn, when you exceed texture memory, instead of handling that gracefully, it just seems to crash. And they're probably aware of that and that's probably gonna be fixed. In fact, while I was filming this, there were a couple of things I was gonna mention that have since been fixed in the latest driver update. So again, Intel is super on top of this, but you know, nine women can't have a baby in a month in terms of project management and doing the software and scaling out the team that's handling this kind of thing. So I get it, I get it. Intel is working on this, and that's really what's going to bring it home. That said, AMD is also in the game, and I think the competition from AMD is a little bit stronger. Everybody wants to buy NVIDIA. NVIDIA has the mind share, but a lot of the competing AMD cards are at a lower price point with just as good or even better performance than NVIDIA, and that uh, sort of gives Intel a run for the money with the ARC A770, I think. Bottom line though, this is the least expensive card for the most performance, but you got some potential quirks that you might have to work through. So keep that in mind. Overall, this is not bad for really a first consumer showing though. I think Intel is gonna be really formidable in the second and third generation. So hopefully Nvidia and AMD are not asleep at the wheel. I know some of these things are definitely on Intel's radar because they talk about the creator engine, their next gen creation engine, which is gonna leverage your you, your built-in GPU and your processor, plus this, plus some other stuff. Intel's definitely saying this thing pairs with an Intel CPU really well, which is what we did for our testing, you know, sort of best case scenario to see how it goes. They also have Intel Deep Link, you know, better together. That's the core processor plus the art graphics is what, what I'm talking about. They call it Hyper Encode and Stream Assist. And so this will leverage both sets of encod encoding hardware because, you know, technically the 13900K, it has the iGPU as I keep talking about. And you can leverage both of those things to get stuff done. But again, the software. The software needs to be a little bit farther along in order for this to really be a super compelling thing. Honestly, the most compelling use case for this was adding it as a second GPU to your system to support more monitors, the AV1 encode, and that sort of thing. But maybe newer gen GPUs will do that. It's also really baffling. So like Nvidia still has DisplayPort 1.4 on their GPUs, which is, you know, 4K, 120 Hertz, unless you get into display stream compression. And even Intel's doing a better job than that here. So, so after doing real world stuff with the Arc and playing games, what are my thoughts? It's surprisingly good. It has some rough edges. And if you're a tinkerer and a gearhead, those rough, rough edges probably aren't gonna bother you. If you enjoy older DirectX 9 based games, it's not an ideal situation. And as we saw, even with Horizon Zero Dawn and Fortnite, there can still be rough edges in the drivers that I'm sure Intel is, is aware of. $330 versus, you know, $500 plus, if you wanna go team green. I mean, those cards are priced to move. So if you're a tinkerer and a gearhead and you, and you've done the price comparison shopping and you want a card that performs somewhere between a 3060 Ti and a 3070 in many, but not all, scenarios, be sure to check your game and check art performance, then it can be a good deal. Those are my thoughts. If you have a specific game you want me to test, engage with me on the Level 1 forums. I'm signing out and you can find me there.